AI has been a subject of fierce debate on social media, with billionaire Mark Cuban receiving a bit of a wake-up call on the legality of using race and gender as a hiring metric by Commissioner Andrea Lucas of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Cuban on Sunday tweeted that he has never hired anyone based exclusively on race, gender, religion, but that race and gender can be part of the equation. Lucas disagreed, writing, unfortunately, you're dead wrong on black letter Title VII law. As a general rule, race, sex can't even be a motivating factor, nor a plus factor, tiebreaker, or tipping point. It's important employers understand the ground rules here. Here now to discuss this story is Will Hild, Executive Director at Consumers Research. Will, welcome back to Rising. Glad to be with you. So there's been a lot of discussion of DEI um, lately in conservative media and on social media. I see Mark Cuban has been tweeting a lot on the subject. Um, what do you make of this? Well, this was really kicked off by the Harvard admissions case ruling that basically said that colleges and universities could not consider race or sex in their admissions programs anymore. And strangely enough, uh, corporations had been relying on this previous jurisprudence that allowed for it in some limited admissions cases to allow for race and sex-based discrimination and promotion and hiring uh, in a lot of these DEI programs. And it was always spurious whether some of the reasoning in these higher ed cases would apply to corporations and was had been tested <coughs> A couple of times and, and not, as Andrea Lucas noted, uh, is not the law when it comes to hiring. But now that that admissions case is, is out, there's no question that uh, race and sex based discrimination in hiring and promotion is, is per se illegal. But a lot of these DEI programs basically are that. I mean, that's literally what they're doing. And so you've seen a lot of corporations uh, struggle to you know, keep their DEI departments happy as they basically clip their wings and say, you can't be doing this anymore. DEI came about as a result of a number of studies uh, that demonstrated that race and sex-based discrimination is pervasive against historically marginalized groups. There's a famous 2004 study that showed that resume applicants with identical uh, applicants rather with identical resumes um, had very different results in the application process. Uh, employers were 50 percent more likely to call back an applicant with a stereotypically white name versus a stereotypically black name. Uh, of course, there's further statistics that show that a high school dropout who is white gets uh, more salary than a college graduate who is black or Hispanic. What should be done about addressing those disparities? I can't speak to the methodology of those studies, but what I can say that to the extent you're in efforts at a corporation are trying to remove racial discrimination from the equation or sex discrimination from the equation, that is in line with the law. And to the extent they're doing that, that's fantastic. But what DEI departments did was basically try to go in and start doing racial and sex-based bean counting and even hit, you know, some corporations, they've even set specific race and sex-based quotas for hiring and promotion. And that's just flat out illegal. I think, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, 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 I would push back against that. I think that you say of course, these corporations should try to address the discrimination that's happening at those corporations. But it does seem like whenever there's any effort that acknowledges the race of the candidate, that is being characterized as a quota system. So I wonder if you've given any thought to what exactly a policy looks like that you would find to be acceptable that address the fact that in hiring circumstances, routinely employers, not necessarily intentionally, but in fact, are privileging white male applicants over others unless there is some policy intervention that takes place. What I would find acceptable is that companies focus on providing best quality goods and services at reasonable prices. We're a consumer protection organization. And what we've seen from these corporations is they focus on their DEI programs, which really do nothing for the bottom line. They don't help their shareholders and they don't help deliver better quality products to their, to their consumers. They focus instead on, again, race and sex based hiring. So uh, that is illegal in this country, regardless of what the intentions of the corporations are, as we saw with Mark Cuban. It's illegal to violate Title VII of, of the Civil Rights Act and, and include that in hiring. It doesn't really regard, matter what their intentions are. But in practice, what it means is that corporations are made worse off and consumers are made worse off because these DEI departments hijack them and focus on these other extraneous things that also now happen to be per se illegal.
Well, well, there's been a lot of research, actually, that having diversity, a, a lot of different kinds of diversity in the workforce is actually an improvement and a benefit to consumers. That's part of the case that Mark, Mark Cuban was making in his tweet. But I still feel like we're not really addressing the question. Of course, race-based discrimination is illegal, including, and principally, the race-based discrimination that was encoded in American law up until the time that, you know, my parents were just children in this country, and which remains in uh, de facto ways, as I've just described, as many numerous studies have revealed. What do you do about the fact that we know, if given the same exact resume, having a stereotypically black name versus a stereotypically white name have different results? What do we do when we know that black and Hispanic people with much higher education who are more qualified than white high school graduates aren't getting the same job opportunities or salary um, opportunities. What do we do about that absent any DEI program or any kind of program that is conscious of the very racial discrimination that is happening in the first place? Well, what we do about that is, is what we did uh, probably over 50 years ago, which is to ban it and make it an actionable tort uh, in law. There's already a large body of labor law that makes such discrimination uh, illegal. So. Uh, having a program and having a department in a corporation that then reinserts race and sex-based hiring and promotion schemes is not a solution to res race and sex-based uh, promotion. It is, is the opposite of that. Uh, uh, in terms of companies that do better because uh, that they're more diverse, no one is saying that, that companies should, should pursue a non-diverse workforce. What they're saying is that their main, what I'm saying is that their main focus should be on serving their customers with high quality goods and, 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 and services. It would you'd be basically saying that there aren't people of merit and competence uh, who can serve uh, uh, consumers to say that the companies need to set race and sex based quotas no, in order to all. have a diverse workforce. I, what I, they I, should I be don't. focusing on <laughs> is people with their, with competence and merit so that they can focus on serving their consumers. This is the purpose of a corporation. Yeah, I, I think the problem is that qualified applicants are being turned away are not being hired because there's discrimination against people on the basis of their race and sex. And c corporations, companies knowing that that's happening implicitly, tacitly, not with, that, with, not with intention, taking an effort to try to in investigate their own biases and try to counter that in their hiring practices, you're saying that is a problem in and of itself and that the default situation should be, as I'm understanding it, please do correct me as I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, the default should be that we allow the discrimination against black, brown people, other historically marginalized groups, women, et cetera, because to do anything about it would be the real problem. No, no, that's a that's a false dilemma. What I'm saying is that DEI departments is currently constructed within corporations writ large have pursued uh, uh, policies like Mark Cuban basically admitted to of racial and sex based discrimination, which is illegal under Title seven is an actionable claim under under labor law, labor law to say that they can, corporation can do nothing, for example, to make sure that they're recruiting from area, you know, recruiting from historically black colleges or, or something like that, where they make sure that applicants are coming from diverse areas. That's perfectly legal. There's and no one's claiming that they can't do that. What I'm saying and, and what Andrea Lucas of the EEOC is saying is that programs that that intend and do use race or sex as a motivating factor in promotion and hiring are illegal. And I would say go further than that. They are bad for both the company and for consumers because they take the, the company's focus off of serving their consumers. That's why companies exist. So we can have things. It's not to engage in race and sex based uh, 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 quotas and, and programs. Well, one of the reasons that DEI has gotten uh, more scrutiny, I think, in recent years is not just for the hiring um, aspect, you know, something affirmative action, something we've been debating for decades in this country, uh, but the training material, DEI training materials, oftentimes related to schools and other areas of employment, but also in corporations, have been leaked. There's more been broader public attention to them and a lot of dissatisfaction with the kind of concepts they introduced. Many of them, I would argue, and others have argued, are themselves um, racist and, in fact, in violation of of the whole spirit of, of the enterprise. Can you comment on that? Well, and this is another area that I think is ripe to be litigated and is being litigated currently, which is uh, along with, along with uh, a ban on race and sex being a qualifying factor and promote uh, a influencing factor in, in promotion and hiring, you also can't create an environment where people feel a hostile workplace environment where, where they're attacked for the color of their skin or their, or their sex. And that's exactly what a lot of these bias trainings have, have basically turned into. Uh, people like Robin D'Angelo, who've, who've run this scam of, of these anti-white bias trainings and anti-Asian and anti-Jewish bias trainings, uh, basically have been helping corporations violate that portion of labor law. And now they are increasingly starting to be sued over, over those. And I think you're going to continue to see that until that practice is, is put to an end. Because as you noted, it's not just uh, race and sex-based hiring and promotion. 
It's also, uh, you know, you cannot be creating a hostile work environment uh, attack, attacking people for their race. Will Hill, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.